sis if it's not giving you enough slip if the comb is not passing through easily then you haven't used enough product you need to use some more hello curlies it's mary and welcome back to the curly closet if this is your first time visiting my channel then welcome if you're returning to my channel then welcome back so today's video is going to be five reasons why your detangling routine is trash number one using the wrong tool for detangling if you have natural hair you're going to need to use a tool that is going to be as gentle on your hair as possible anything that has wide teeth is a good start so a comb like this a comb like this a brush like this anything like this can work I would not recommend this in the first instance there's a couple of teeth missing it is what it is now there are a few circumstances in which this can be used but generally speaking even if you're going to use this the best thing to do is to start with something wide tooth before you go in with something like this if you have a wide tooth comb or a wide tooth brush a type of brush or comb that has flexible bristles in general they tend to be a lot kinder on your hair you can get tangles and snags out of your hair a lot more easily and with a lot less breakage number two leaving too long a time in between detangling sessions i understand that it can be a bit of a time consuming process to detangle your hair but trust me if you keep to a regular schedule of detangling, it will actually make your detangling sessions a lot easier to manage. If you think about it, every single day your hair, your hair is shedding. So when you detangle your hair, that's the time when all the shed hairs come out. Now, if you leave it too long, you're going to have a lot of shed hairs in with your hair that's still growing, which will mean more propensity for knots tangled snags and therefore breakage so just try to keep to a regular schedule rather than leaving it weeks and even months until your next detangling session now admittedly this cannot be avoided if you are going to put in a protective style that's going to stay in your hair for a couple of months at a time but again once that comes out you have to be very careful with the way that you detangle your hair because you have a lot more shed hair in it so if you can help it try to keep to a regular schedule and not leave it too long before the next time number three not starting from the ends of your hair now i think this is very standard practice and i think everybody should know this by now but some people still don't practice it generally speaking if you have naturally textured hair you don't want to start detangling from the very roots i'll give you an example if I take this comb right here and I put it in the roots of my hair like this and then I try to pull it through you can see it goes to a certain point and then it stops it doesn't want to keep going and if I keep pulling it through my hair I'm going to get breakage whereas if I decide to start from the very ends and work my way up I can slowly take out the shed hairs without the likelihood of getting a lot of breakage number four detangling on bone dry hair now natural hair textured hair is naturally dry so it helps to have some sort of lubrication or slip on your strands when you're going to pass a comb through it so whether that be water whether it be conditioner or a combination of both whether it be water and some kind of oil whether it be be a pre-poo or a leave-in conditioner whatever it may be you need to add something to your hair before you start detangling it if you detangle on dry hair the likelihood is you're going to get a lot of breakage we don't want that and also if your hair has product in it it's a lot easier for shed hairs to just slip out of your hair with the comb or the brush whereas if you're doing it on dry hair it's a lot more likely to grab onto your hair like this tangle break pull out extra hair not a good look and number five following on from number four is detangling with not enough product in your hair now everybody's hair is slightly different so 
as youtubers always say what works for me may not work for you but if you're detangling your hair and you have just a bit of leaving in or just a bit of water or it's just a little bit damp and not really wet sometimes that can actually impede your detangling process sometimes people like to use a small amount of product and put it through their whole head and think that that's enough sis if it's not giving you enough slip if the comb's not passing through easily then you haven't used enough product you need to use some more so that's it those are my five reasons why your detangling routine might just be trash now in the comments below please share your tips for detangling. What are your do's and don'ts for a successful detangling session? Let me know and let all of us know in the comment section below. If you like videos like this one, then be sure to hit the red subscribe button below. You can also hit the bell for notifications. If you leave a curl emoji, then you can be featured as the curly shout out, just like this wonderful person right here. Thank you for supporting the curly closet and commenting on my video. If you enjoy this video then please share it with a friend, also give it a very big thumbs up below, send it to someone who needs help with their detangling routine. All of these things help to spread my videos and my channel around the YouTube universe, so thank you. Wishing you health, happiness and beautiful hair. I'll see you again soon on The Curly Closet. Take care. Bye.